Imagine a world where you could take CO2 from the air and turn it into something useful. Well, thanks to the power of chemistry, we're there. Well, kind of there. We're there with asterisks. On this episode of the Oxford Sparks Big Questions podcast, we're asking, how do you convert CO2 into jet fuel? Hello, I'm Emily Elias, and this is the show where we seek out the brightest minds at the University of Oxford, and we ask them the big questions. And for this one, we have found a researcher who is a master of chemical bonds, both in breaking them and reassembling them. So I'm uh, Dr. Tianchen Xiao. I was trained as a chemist, used to work in the inorganic chemistry laboratory. Oxford University as a senior research fellow. So my main work is on research and development of new catalysts for better and high efficiency of the chemical process. Okay, so you're going to be my chemistry teacher and hold my hand through this. You've promised me. Um, So let's just kind of start at the beginning. Before we get to how you turn CO2 into jet fuel, why would you want to turn CO2 into jet fuel? Oh, clearly, we are facing a serious climate crisis. We see the now, you know, the extreme weather. Certainly, it's become human, increasing human activities. Why? In the last, maybe, Hundred year in last hundred years, we have been continuous using more and more fossil fuel. You know, combustion engine, boiler, power station. The human being emits such big amount of carbon dioxide in the air, which now causing we call the global warming. So CO two is causing trouble. Because in the past, before the Industrial Revolution, CO2 in air concentration is about 200 ppm, called part per million. Now it's nearly 400 parts per million ppm. So this really is stubborn. We are facing a serious climate crisis. So we must reduce CO2 emission. So... If you're wanting to change CO2 on a molecular level to something else, Mm -hmm. how do you do that? Okay, so CO2 is a very stable molecular, very low activity, and it needs hydrogen to react with CO2. In theory, they can react like a, a boy and a girl they want to date in. In theory, they can, but because they're separated by a river, you have to build a bridge for them to meet. So the catalyst like a bridge, and you must find the right catalyst for CO2 to react with hydrogen to make aviation fuel or other chemicals. So this catalyst, very similar to a bridge, you must find a very good catalyst for CO2 to be used. Okay, so the catalyst is the bridge. How do you go about finding a catalyst? Oh, a catalyst is like, it's a, it's a material, I should say. In theory, we know that from last like 200 years research, we know that some catalysts can activate CO2 and then enable it to react with hydrogen. But uh, the catalyst can make like CO2 can change to methane, another green gas, if you don't make a catalyst properly. So our target product is aviation fuel. It's like uh, eight carbon linked together. Methane is a one single carbon molecule. So you might build the right catalyst so this needs lots of experimental work. In theory, you say, okay, over this surface, over this bridge, the boy and the girl can meet. 
But if the bridge is too narrow, if they can't walk through the bridge, they still can't meet. That's exactly like how can you make the catalyst? You might make a right catalyst through experiment. So is it literally trial and error to figure out what catalyst will make the bridge between the boy and the girl on the other side of the river or the CO2 and the hydrogen on the other side of the river? More or less, certainly with the... Uh, much more accumulated work in the last century, we do have some theory guidance, theoretical guidance, but still, if you can't, because this catch the preparation in a nanoscale, not like anything in a missile scale or in a like a micro scale, usually you can, on the microscope, you can do that. This on the like a nanoscale, so sometimes, it's really, in theory, you know that this such, let's say, bridge you want, that's the widths or like the high. But in the preparation, you still have to do lots of experiment. Yeah, try and error, you're right. This is all theoretical until you get to that magical place through trial and error that finds something that works. How hard is it to take something from th- theoretical to very practical and you can say, turn CO2 into jet fuel? Certainly, in theory, if some we, in chemistry we call it a thermodynamic, that means that uh, thermodynamic like uh, the potential, if they can like a boy and a girl, they are attractive, they have an intention to meet up the day to day. <laughs> so thermodynamically, they could work, but uh, they could work in a different way. If they, I say like the CO2 and hard, if you can't build the right catalyst, they will go a wrong way, wrong product, or they even can't react. So we have done lots of lots of work and designed the, uh, from our lamp scale, the right catalyst surface, the surface because where the CO2 and hard meet, meet up and how to get there, because CO2 is a single carbon molecule. We want to get aviation fuel, which you need eight carbon molecule or above. So we need the carbon linked up. So it's not easy because hydrogen is flammable. When you do, you may have, you need high pressure, like you need to give them the right path for them to react. Can't meet if you don't have a right candidate there. So it's really take a bit longer journey nearly 14 years for us to come to this stage. But you've managed to do this, correct? Like you have managed to be able to convert CO2 that is floating around in the air and at the end come out with jet fuel? Yeah, that's we we think we are we are lucky. Certainly based on our like uh, last uh, 30 year or uh, my last 30 year work experience together with Professor Peter Edwards. There's also other way people to do that. People think, okay, like uh, they can use two steps. So because some other people like in before us, the many industry practice, they try to make jet fuel from CO2 and hydrogen using two step process. Let's like uh, they I like again, like this bridge and example, they may add a uh, lot of stone or somewhere where no water, then they go another step, two step process. They change CO2 to CO first. CO2, you know, is to CO, then CO plus hydrogen called saline gas, which could be used for making aviation fuel or wax. So CO plus hydrogen to aviation fuel or wax is a mature industry. But CO2 plus hydrogen go to CO. This step has never been industrialized before. So the reason why we think we got much better efficiency, we use one step, CO2 plus hydrogen over our catalyst. One catalyst do multiple function to make. So this will save energy input, save capital, and make the pro- product more competitive. I mean, it almost sounds like magic. <laughs> As somebody <laughs> who doesn't work in this world of chemistry, 
How did it feel when you were able to figure out what catalyst, what bridge you needed to make and actually make CO2 into jet fuel? Oh, when the emotion in the end certainly so, so exciting. And because in the past, people said we must, uh, before us, we called, you know, the concept called CCUS and carbon capture, utilization, and storage. The main trend of industry say, the mainstream industry, say, okay, we, while we use fossil fuel, we just capture carbon and uh, store it, bury it on the ground because they think CO2 utilization is almost impossible and not economical. So after we are one step process, when we make this jet fuel run hydrocarbons, we think that we change the whole landscape of the industry. And people will now, after like last five years, you see the whole industry change, turn to use CO2 rather than just bury it. So what's the current status of the project? Are you able to do this at a large scale? In large scale, we are working in principle is durable. Then how can you build a bridge efficiently? How can you make this process? Because for industrial, you made not only one girl and boy dating, you made many girl and boy dating through this. After. So we are scale up the process. Then we say, how can we make this like a cut more efficient? because this industrial pro how to avoid the crowd the jam, traffic jam. So all been scaled up, all been on the developed stage, but uh, this certainly is a step change. So you've got to be optimistic, though. I think not only we are optimistic, but the whole human being should feel optimistic about the future, particularly for the future generation. And we said because uh, they need to have a bright future, a safe future. Because when we look back, the en- renewable energy now becoming more and more like uh, more and more supply. But renewable energy now, we say the hydrogen economy, look back last 20 years, hydrogen cost reduced or decreased continuously. So once you get hydrogen, so the best way to use hydrogen is to react with CO2 to form hydrocarbons like uh, aviation fuel, or chemicals, or plastic, which if we can use surface carbon, if we don't dig up or stop mining the fossil fuel on the ground, then the CO2 won't build up in air. So we got to like net zero world. Are you very proud of yourself? Because I feel like you should feel proud. <laughs> I think it's certainly it's a teamwork. We are all proud with our like uh, development. We think not only for us, also for the human being. We feel we, 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 we should be proud for that, but certainly we still have a long way to go to show that on you know, industrial scale, it's working, it's much more efficient. This podcast was brought to you by Oxford Sparks from the University of Oxford with music by John Lyons and a special thanks to Dr. Tijin Shou. Tell us what you think about this podcast. You can find us on the social medias. We are at Oxford Sparks. We also have a website, oxfordsparks.ox.ac.uk. I've said that once. I've said that twice. I've said it a thousand times. I'm Emily Elias. Bye for now.